So I'm like, no, 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 porque se enoja tu mamá. Hey guys, Gavin Syme here. Hope you are having a good one. I thought we'd do a practical video about what it's like in Mexico today, in particular when it comes to vehicles, insurance, and vehicle maintenance, all right? Because prices, what we pay to get things done, and just kind of give you an idea. So if you're coming down here, if you're traveling down here, just some tips that I've picked up along the way. So I know insurance isn't very exciting. Love or hate insurance though, if you come down here, it's, it, it's a good idea to have it. Because first of all, about two thirds of the people, sure, they still have, technically they have rules, right? But I've talked in other videos how rules work in Mexico. Like there's a rule so that the police can pester you and screw you over. But a lot of people are poor here. A lot of people simply ignore like insurance regulations. A lot of people don't have driver's licenses. So yeah, you pay attention and you expect the other person isn't gonna be insured. If you're coming down here and you have a nice car, uh, and you don't want to worry about that. You don't want to worry about the logistics of what happens if you get in an accident and you don't speak the language well. You want insurance on your vehicle. You want full coverage. Um, like this truck here is going to cost about probably 400 bucks a year to get full coverage on. Here's the thing. If you're just traveling to visit, there are some online places like Sam Bourne's that just can, will sell you a temporary insurance for like a month. Because don't expect your U.S. insurance to provide you any coverage down here. Most of them will not. Also, don't necessarily go for the cheapest insurance. If you're living down here, if you're coming down here for a while and you want to get a domestic insurance, make sure you ask questions. Make sure that they're not going to give you trouble later. I've had, uh, with Zurich insurance, um I had a, just a small accident where I beat up the front end because I hit a piece of concrete in the road and they straight up scammed me. They actually came out, they didn't answer their phone, they like, disconnected when we called. This is a German company, right? But these companies do the same thing. Even though technically there's a lot of consumer protection laws, they'll come down here and just manipulate the system and give bribes and stuff to screw things over. So Zurich is this German-based company and they actually came out, they sent an adjuster out because they didn't answer their phone and I had like plastic falling off the front bumper of the car. I had to use wires and stuff and a friend came and helped and we wired it up and I had to make the car so it would work, right? They came out, the adjuster, knowing what was done, right? It was totally obvious the damage hadn't been fixed. I was explaining, you know, here's what I did. I just put some wires and put it up. He entered it. He said, oh, because you touched it, because you wired it up, we're, uh, this little line in our clause means we're not responsible. We're not going to pay anything. He entered it in their system as completely repaired. There's like consumer rights agencies down here, but they tend to be kind of overloaded and not very well organized. So sometimes there are ways to get resolution because these people are violating the law. Pretty crazy. Imagine your insurance adjuster working with his boss to scam you on what's obviously supposed to be covered under your full coverage policy just so they can not pay like a $1,500 repair. In fact, when the adjuster realized that I was recording, he got in his car and ran away so fast that he didn't even close the hatch. He just tore off down the road, as you see right here, because I was recording, and I kind of suspected as it was going along, like this guy's looking for a reason to deny this claim and to scam me, not to actually help me and fix the problem. Needless to say, I'll, I'll never be buying that insurance again. And I am in the process of suing Zurich Insurance, which is a fairly accessible process, but it's still bureaucracy. So I'll, I'll keep you posted as to whether that actually turns out to be a benefit or not. Which brings us back that I was working on the truck today. The, the CV was leaky. This is an old CV from the truth van, right? Because I break CVs on that sometimes. And these, 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 this, it has the same, the four-wheel four drive conversion on the truth van right over here. It has this van, right, that pulls the trailer, has the same CV on the four-wheel drive conversion uh, that I have done up in Utah as my 2011 GMC Sierra Duramax. So I had this kicking around. I went down to the mechanic. Here's what you'll see about mechanics. Most mechanics are not gonna charge you more than about 10 bucks an hour down here. Now there's good mechanics and there's bad mechanics just like everywhere else. But in general, they're a lot less organized, right? They're guys working out of their sh little shop, their house. Um, what I found is not that they're bad mechanics. Sometimes they're not as advanced in terms of diagnostic and stuff, especially on this new computer stuff. My, my, my Cupra right now, my Leon, Seat Cupra, which is just the Spanish version of a Golf GTI. I believe it's a Mark V Golf GTI. It has the, the, the two liter turbo, all that kind of stuff, right? So because that's a turbo, it's a little bit of a less common car. The parts are a little harder to get. They're a little more expensive. Parts down here tend to be a little more in Mexico. You'd think it would be the opposite since they're making a lot of these parts for your Fords and your Chevys and stuff like that, but that's not how they do it. The Fords and the Chevys and stuff use the labor down here 
But then they charge the people the same price for vehicles. And this has to do with NAFTA agreements and all kinds of crap. They're just screwing the people over. The US bribing Mexican politicians to screw over their own people. So you think like, oh, well they make Fords down here. They're paying the people way less. Those people should be able to go and buy a Ford F-150 and pay less. Uh -uh. In fact, a lot of the cars are being sent to the US and then re-imported back into Mexico so everybody can get their, their graft and their money and their taxes. And guess who gets screwed, screwed over? The little guy. Now, that's a topic for another day. I'm just kind of giving you an overview here. But because of all these shenanigans, parts are not like way more expensive. I can drive down here to the AutoZone and pick up a Duralast CV joint. And it's probably going to cost me, you know, 125 bucks or something like that. But in general, I would say auto parts are probably costing 20% more. And at times, they're a little harder to find. And so we're in the States, there's, there's always going to be like a diesel mechanic that's a specialist in Duramax or in, in Ford or in Cummins, right? Now, it might cost you five grand, but you're going to be able to find the specialist. Here, you might have to work a little more. You might have to go to a non-diesel mechanic and they'll kind of figure it out. And usually they will, but it's going to be a little more work and a little more time. It's like on the Cooper I just said, it's burning like double the gas right now. It's got fuel smell. There's a, dis there's a major fuel problem. It could be the MAF or the MAP sensor. I've been doing research myself. It could be it needs some injector service. Um, I'm going to take it tomorrow to see another guy that's more of a, more of a Volkswagen specialist uh, in terms of those motors to look at it. But I've had it to two mechanics already, and there's like, there's no leaks. Uh, maybe we should do this. Maybe we should check that. But a, kind of a lack of confidence of what might be going wrong on a problem that's a little more complicated. You go to the auto parts store, you pick one up, you take it down there, and you're going to pay a guy probably 20, 25 bucks, and he's going to have that thing in. I've blown a CV on the truth van on a trip, had my brother run over to the auto zone, find one in stock, bring it to me, and because there's so many more shops, right? There's so many more mechanics. There's so many more little tire shops and mom and pop shops. There was a mechanic within like a hundred yards of where I broke it, even though I was in a fairly rural area, brought the part. And within two hours, I was on the road again with a new CV axle on the front of that. Today I went down, it was leaking. There was oil all over. And so instead of putting a new one in, he said, hey, bring me that old CV axle that we put in. And so I brought this old one back and he, he grabbed this because it was making some noise. Let's see, it looks, it looks like something's funky in here, right? He pulled this out of the CV axle that was, that was up here on the driver's side. And he took the part off of this broken one and he took the boot off of this broken one. This kind of thing is really common here. They fix things here. Now, sometimes you might say, no, I want a brand new one. It's gonna fail faster. But like, I don't actually use this truck that much. And I'm like, no, I take the boot off this broken one, but the boot's still good. Reclamp it under the new one, pour more grease in it and swap the part out from that broken one. So I had a, my, my CV axle rebuilt today from this old beater one. And that cost me like, you know, he charged me like 30 bucks in labor. And this guy's not terribly cheap. Um, but, he, but he usually follows through and, and gets it done, right? So that was about $30. Uh, I'm just throwing stuff out, throwing prices out. Um, tabs, almost never renew tabs down here. Now, if, if your car is coming from the US and you wanna officially import it, it's a huge bureaucracy. This is the problem is that the Mexican government, like all governments, is super stupid. They're really dumb. Now, the US government is super corrupt and they will screw you over, but they'll do it in an organized fashion. So they're like, yes, we're going to rob you, but we're gonna make it pretty easy. You can fill out this form online. You can give us the bribe money, da, 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 da. You can pay your tickets online. Here, no, they will make it as hard as possible to give them money. The government is so dumb here. It's, it kind of reminds me of like going to the courthouse in the 90s, but twice, twice as bad. And part of that I understand is like culture and language barrier. People here are more used to it, but anything bureaucracy, anything from getting your, your residency, or your green card, which is way easier technically than in the US. There's just so many dumb things. It's like when you go down to the courthouse here, instead of wanting to get your money and get the problem resolved, they're looking for a way to not work and to say, you know, I know this is government workers all over the world, but it's almost like they're gonna look for a way. Oh no, you put your name in the wrong place on the form. You need to go reprint the form, start over and come back tomorrow. On the other hand, I, I just don't, renew tabs. I don't want to be extorted by these by these crooks, right? Why should I have to pay the government? Why should I have to pay the government to drive a car that I've paid for? Not only I've paid for, I pay the gas tax on and I paid tax when I bought it. This isn't their car. They should get zero. 
Those tap, I shouldn't have to buy a sticker to my car to pay, maintain the roads. They're already screwing us over for gas tax, right? And gas here is normally in the $4 US a gallon. It's normally in the middle tier California range. So considering what people make down here, the government is absolutely robbing the people in gas tax because most of that gas is being made here, of course, with less labor costs, less regulation, et cetera. So the gas should be 50 cents a dollar a gallon and they're still getting their taxes. But the corruption is so bad with the government that they're just robbing the people blind for gas. And this, is, this goes back to my topics all the time on this channel about defending your rights. Most people just, just don't fight, right? Occasionally they get mad, and when Latinos get mad in protest, they tend to be way more hardcore about it than those of us up in the North, because you don't go to prison for the rest of your life just for protesting here. The rest of the time, they're trying to survive. They got their jobs and they have the same problem that we have all over the world of like, no, I don't want to stick my neck out. If we realize that no is the most powerful word in Spanish or English, when you're talking about these government politicians and crooks that, that don't protect anyone, right? New safety policies, policies, new police. Do you see safety improving in Mexico, in the US? anywhere in the world, you see crime going down, you see less theft of any of the safety policies in our lifetime that are constantly violating our civil rights. Have they made the world a better place? Have they made the world more safe? You tell me in the comments. I don't think so. And by the way, like this video. If you then go to sell your car, if you have a domestic car that's, that's got Mexico plates on it, and they want to actually change the title, right? You can just sign off on the paper and say, I'm selling this car to Joe. And this tends to work with like cheap old beater cars. But if you're selling a nice vehicle, they're going to want to make sure it's legit and put it in their name and go down to the courthouse or the Presidencia Municipal and do the paperwork. So at that point, somebody's going to have to pay the back tabs because they won't, they won't give you the transfer if you don't pay it. Occasionally, the police will harass you for not having it, but usually you can kind of just say, no, no, it's fine, leave me alone and go on your way, as long as you know your rights and have a little bit of confidence. Most people, even here, right, I say like people don't fight enough. Even down here, most of the time, only people with nice new cars that they're making payments on are renewing their tabs. Most of the cars down here do not have current tabs. Driving drunk doesn't have much of a penalty here either, and that doesn't mean you should come do it. Like, we should be responsible and care about other people, and so... It's sometimes people drive really stupid down here. And I'm like, if you wreck, who's paying? And that's another reason why, even if it's their fault, I want to be covered because navigating the system down here can be a real biatch, all right? And, and you just want to keep it as simple as possible. But don't use Zurich insurance. You can look. You have like these consumer agencies like Profeca. You can actually look online and see like what the best consumer rated uh, agent, insurance agencies down here, like Qualitas, GNP, these are some of the higher ones in the past couple years. Another area I've heard that is if your car gets impounded or towed for some reason. So be careful about that. Checkpoints. Checkpoints are a scam just like they are in the States where they're trying to find you with something wrong, even if you're not drunk or anything like that. They're trying to find a way to tow your car as a checkpoint or a retain as they're called. Now I never stop at these. I have no desire to stop and be screwed over unless they point guns at me like they did at the video that one time in uh, Hidalgo. The state police pointed guns at me and I stopped, but I still didn't comply. I didn't give them anything and I didn't get out of the car and I didn't let them search the car. Uh, Article 16 of the Constitution down here does protect you from searches just like the Fourth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. So that's Article 16 of the Mexican Constitution. They have absolutely no right to search your car. I've never ever down here. They've asked, but I've never opened my car for a police officer that stopped me and I've never let them search my bags. I just don't. Just say no. You have to say no. The world needs to start saying no. You don't have to be angry. Like the culture's different. Sometimes that's hard for us Northerners to adapt to because we kind of just say what we think and we get more aggressive. Um, so you can resist more, just try and do it in a polite way. And if you're a tourist, if your Spanish is bad, if you don't know Spanish, don't try to speak it. Just speak English, right? If a cop's trying to screw with you, don't say a word of Spanish play the tourist card at that point, because it's them, it's on them to get somebody that speaks English, not on you. So if a police officer stops you and you're like, hey, what's up, bro? Like, what do you want? Uh, and, he, and he's like, ah, pues, hablas español. I, I speak English, bro. Just do that, because it's actually his legal responsibility to bring a translator, and he's probably not going to. He's probably just, just like, smile and wave, bro, smile and wave. Now, I'm, I know I'm not always good at this, because when I see injustice, I like to speak, and the fact that I do speak Spanish, I'll be like, oye, ¿qué estás haciendo? No puedes revisar estas bolsas. Estás chingando a la gente, ¿ok? No, eso no se vale, amigo. Ya que vete de la Puebla. That's what I want to say when I deal with the police. I'm like, no, 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 porque se enoja tu mamá. 
that, you know, it's hard for me sometimes to shut up. I'm trying to adapt to the culture, okay? Normally, technically, if you bring a vehicle from the US, when you cross the border, you're supposed to get a vehicle permit. And they will harass you a bit for that in the north. Um, and so, to, you know, so there's all these rules, right? If you read official like travel, like senior travel groups, they're all like, oh, they'll take your car. Oh, you can be arrested. Yes, technically there's all these laws. But rule number one, if, a, if, a, if an official approaches your vehicle, the door should be locked. Never let a cop open your door. Rule number two, they have no right to enter your vehicle. So I'm not saying come down here and like stress yourself out. Like, oh no, I'm not gonna get the vehicle permit when I come in. If you're first coming to visit to Mexico, right? The border's open, you just drive across the border. And then usually a few miles inland, there's a place where you stop and get a temporary visa for up to six months and you get a vehicle permit and stuff like that. And normally it's not an issue, but there's still some bureaucracy. And sometimes they'll still be like, oh, well, this is wrong. Oh, well, your papers aren't right. Normally it's not a big deal. Just do a little research before you come. Because if you're actually driving down across the border, you probably want to get your vehicle permits just so they don't screw with you. But if you decide to stay here and you come to the middle of the country and that vehicle permit expires, you're going to lose a little bit of deposit that they put on it, which is what they want, right? They're trying to get money. So you might, you might lose a couple hundred bucks on, on vehicle deposit. Uh, but these are, just, these are just ways that they're trying to squeeze money out of people, right? It's just taxes. There's been a lot of push in Corredero State this year of people, of them trying to push people to renew their tabs and say, oh, we'll give you discounts, right? There's a law, you have to do tabs. We're gonna start pulling you over to do tabs, but don't worry, come on in, we'll give you a discount. They're like pleading with people. I'm getting emails and they raise the price of tabs, I think to like a hundred bucks or something. And people are like, screw this. And people are protesting that because that's a lot of money here. People have to decide to fight for their homes and their communities and their pueblas and their liberty. And it's important that we come together and I'm always trying to look out for my neighbor, but it's not like you, I, can, I can't even fix the US because we're such slaves, right? You guys and me together and the activists and the James Freemans and the Ammon Bundys and the Josh Martinez's and the Kelly Stewart's and the John, the US isn't getting fixed. It's not like I'm just gonna come down here and be like, oh, I'm the, I'm the outsider, right? I know about civil rights, I can fix things. No, people have to decide that they've had enough and we have to learn to use the word no. This is practical stuff, not like scaredy pants, retiree community stuff that you're gonna see on a Facebook group. I'm not saying if you come to visit Mexico that you shouldn't kind of do it by the book, get your insurance, get your vehicle import permit, because you're coming here to enjoy yourself. You don't want to stress out. I'm just trying to give you real perspectives and also remind you that it's okay to stand up for yourself. And of course, like always, if you ever have a problem, an accident, that's another thing. Usually people don't move their vehicles off the road in an accident until the insurance adjuster comes. And it's probably because of things like what I experienced with Zurich Insurance. They didn't answer the phone. They didn't show up and then later they just found a clause and an excuse so they didn't have to pay up and so people are paranoid of those kind of things down here and a lot of times it holds up traffic now what i will say if i'm in an accident i probably am going to move my car because this isn't an official rule but what i'm going to do like always is moment something happens i'm going to turn that camera on so you're going to see where everything's at there's going to be evidence of everything everything's recorded the same if a policeman stops me down here to this point i've never given a bribe to a cop i've never let them enter my vehicle or search me and I've been down here for like five years now. Now I've had to stand up for myself a few times. That is just kind of an insight from my perspective from five years living in Mexico of vehicles, insurance, travel, and kind of the things that, that go along with it, including, including the mechanics. So I hope someone finds this useful. It was, it's kind of long. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. But if you did find it useful, hit that subscribe and like button. If you want to see more videos like this of just practical stuff, well, let me know in the comments. They're right down there. Bye, guys.